Todd, this man is busy. He makes the rounds in a lot of different markets to talk baseball, and one of one of those markets is us. Craig Calcaterra joins us, hardballtalk.com, uh, part of the NBC Sports Network, and the good people at NBC said, get out at 31. So we have seven minutes with uh, our boy Craig Calcaterra here. And by the way, if we hit 31, Todd, I'm not kidding. If we hit 31 and he's in the middle of answering something, we're just going to say bye, and we're just going to let him go. Okay? We're just, we're just going to cut him off. Right there, because we want to make sure he hits his next spot. Thank you for joining us, by the way, Craig. Um, there is about, according to uh, my sidekick here, Mr. Lizenby, he projects that about 25% of the Oklahoma City area of our listening audience is Cardinals fans. So let me start there. How much really does the Wainwright injury affect them? Uh, immediately, not at all. In fact, you know, they haven't lost a game since he went down. Uh, the, the Wainwright injury is an injury of attrition. Uh, for as big a deal as he is, for his, uh, one of the best players in baseball that he is, uh, the way you feel that is not losing his production as much as you feel it trickling onto the rest of the staff. You have starting pitchers who go, who replace him, who go a few, uh, fewer innings every time out. That bleeds into the bullpen, which gets a little bit more work every time out. And uh, come July and August, when it's uh, hot, you uh, find yourself with a much thinner p- uh, pitching staff than you had before. I know it's early, Craig, but if if the Wainwright injury does start to affect them, and obviously we know it will affect them in the postseason in a series, not having him out there. But do you see the Cardinals maybe making a move at the deadline for another pitcher? Is that something we should probably expect? Well, it's going to be kind of hard, just because it doesn't right now look like there are a ton of pitchers out there on the market. Um, it's going to be purely a function of, uh, of their lead in the Central. Right now they're up by six and a half games. Uh, Pittsburgh is flailing. If, uh, and I think Pittsburgh really is the only serious challenger to the Cardinals in the Central for the division crown. The Cubs are interesting, but they're going to be very uneven because they're young. Uh, I think the Reds are, uh, are just not that good, and the Brewers obviously are terrible. Uh, so I think if you have this five, six, seven game lead, uh, heading into uh, you know June, they're probably not going to look very seriously for a pitcher and just hope to deal with uh, internal options. How would you judge, if you can, the because I know it's small sample size alert, the Craig Council managerial debut in Milwaukee? Ah, uh, interesting. I, I, one thing I liked first and foremost, he said uh, the day he got the job was uh, he's not a big fan of uh, of uh, set lineup construction. He doesn't read too much into that. Most data in baseball backs that up. It doesn't really matter who you have in your in the six hole versus the nine hole versus everything else. And uh, council uh, maybe uh, you know may, maybe is going to be a little bit more creative with that sort of thing. That could be fun. Mostly though, this the hiring and the firing of Ron Renneke, You know, six weeks ago they uh, gave Ron Renneke an extension into uh, through 2016. Uh, picked up his option. I don't know how six weeks ago Renneke's the guy you want leading your team. Six weeks later, he's not. But, you know, that's baseball. Managers take the fall for bad play. We have a game that we're uh, playing on our show now that we debuted yesterday, Craig, and it's called Go For It. It's kind of like name that tune. So I would say, uh, you know, guys on the Oklahoma City Thunder roster, and Zach would say, I can name four. You would say, I can name five. Well, yesterday, our one of our categories <laughs> was guys on the roster for the Houston Astros. And I think Zach gave up at two. I said I could. I said I could name two, and uh, and the, the guy I was playing against said I can name three, and I said name him. He couldn't do it. <laughs> he didn't do it. Yes, oh, man. he couldn't do it. I, and then I couldn't have done it either. Does that does that say uh, more about Zach and the guy that he was competing against, or does that say more about the Astros and what they've done with kind of a no name roster here early on? Uh, it certainly says a lot about how baseball works, right? When a team has a breakthrough year. Uh, they don't get a big attendance bump that year. It comes the next year. And uh, the same thing, you know, look at the Royals last year. I bet you this time last year people couldn't get three uh, in, in a Royals thing, but this year they probably could because they got all that exposure. But, yeah, I mean, the Astros, had, we talk about a teardown and, and, and rebuild. I mean, this is a long one. This is, it took them longer to do this than it did to build the Astrodome. And, uh, you know, now it's starting to pay off. Really, Jose Altuve is the only sort of brand name there. Uh, but the nation's getting to know George Springer. They're getting to know, uh, you know, Luis Valbuena. They're getting to know all these other guys. And, uh, you know, that, that's the thing. That's the beauty of a good team. Because an Astros fan, a diehard Astros fan who is stuck with his team forever, they can say, oh, yeah, I know that guy. And, and there's something satisfying about that. 
Craig Calcaterra with us, hardballtalk.com, talking some baseball with us on the Little Caesars Hot and Ready Hotline on 107.7 The Franchise. Um, while I'm thinking about it, when we were talking about managers, it made me think of something. Give me the ma- – if this is a tough question, I think, but you might be – there might be one off the top that you have. The manager and the metric, okay? Give me the manager that bucks a trend – that basically all the scribes and the rest of baseball managers subscribe to that one manager doesn't. What's the manager and the metric? Uh, interesting. Interesting. That's a good question. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a snarky answer, but how about Mike Sosha making his players happy? <laughs> there are always reports that you know Mike Sosha – does not get along very so well with the It's a an lot intangible of metric. You guys are all about the numbers, and you give me an intangible metric. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm more of a fellow traveler of the sabermetric crew. I'm not really a numbers guy myself. Okay, but, you know, it's good. funny. That's the sort of book these days on the managers. He's the guy that keeps the clubhouse happy. He's the guy that, you know, needs to be a little more friendly. That's why you're seeing all these managers get hired with no managerial experience, but they had legitimate major league careers. A lot of that now is because he can say to this guy, I did this and I did that. Sosha has been there forever. He uh, he has survived years that anyone would be fired from after big freeze and signings, uh, having a couple of really bad years in a row, kind of broke through last year. Plus, there always seems to be some level of clubhouse or front office strife going on in Los Angeles. Doesn't seem to matter much for him. And, uh, you know, I don't know how that happens. I don't know how that works, but good for Mike. One minute, Todd. Hurry. You mentioned that a lot of guys are getting hired maybe without – uh, managerial history because they get along with players. We're in Oklahoma City where we just hired Billy Donovan as a head coach of our basketball team here who has no NBA experience. In your in your experience, is it more important in 2015 to get along with the players? Are the X's and O's coaches, are those guys kind of falling by the wayside now? Oh, I think so. The X's and O's come from the front office now, way more from, than the coaching staff. The coaching staff and the managers are designed to keep the players happy and keep a smooth ship running and, uh, and morale whereas the GM and the, the analytics guys are the ones deciding batting orders and everything else. But yeah, it's been a fundamental shift, at least in baseball. All right, one word to end it. Just one word. What Are we at the point, yes or no, that we can stop saying small sample size in the Major League Baseball season? No. All right, see you later, Craig. Thanks for coming on. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, man. It's 31 on the button. That's right, NBC. That's called professional. Right there.